You know the scriptures, where there is no vision, the people perish. Just about 14, uh, just over, yeah, 14, 15 days ago, or a little more than that, I was in some of those regions, you know. You saw people from the borders of Burma, borders of China, and so on. Those are regions where we are laboring. Now let us turn to Mark, first chapter. Let us see what our dear Lord preached first from the 14th verse. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. You know, one of those prime burdens that the Lord laid upon this fellowship is declaring exactly what Jesus preached. And now actually the origins of this fellowship was at a time when modernism, what is modernism? Modern disbelief in the word of God that went out of Germany, America and England. Just put the Bible aside. Its old record isn't current anymore. Now at such a time, my father began to declare Jesus Christ the same yesterday Today, forever, Jesus is the same. And not only did he declare it, anybody who was present at the meetings, they saw how Jesus was working today as he always worked. All the works that Jesus did were just taking place before the people. So, the theologians piped down. They could not go ahead with their false theology. They had to see that things are far different from what they had been teaching all the Christian churches. You know, so, the great gains which were won by sacrifice and dedication of the early missionaries was all washed out. And at such a time, God began to use this fellowship when I was still a boy. And one of those truths which God brought out is this, what did Jesus preach? Did he just preach, go and do some penance in a forest or in a monastery or some such thing? One of the scandals of today is the scandal arising 
which is a very old problem, let me tell you. It has been found right from the early history of Rome. The confessional becoming the graveyard of many people. You see? And many girls being seduced as a result and secretly becoming pregnant and the babies being killed. Oh, this has been the history. You can read it in the history books. If you really want to know, oh, it makes very sad reading. It, it blows your mind to think that no less than ten popes in Rome were sponsored by harlots. You can't believe it. And when the church had to be cleansed, you know, there was naturally a lot of opposition. Truth is always opposed, even to this day. Truth is opposed even in a country like England. But what I have seen is truth wins. And this is the word of God. And today, once again, there is an upsurge of information which cannot be hidden anymore, that the same things are taking place in the church. The ancient church system, same things. And some of the big dioceses in America are getting bankrupt with the lawsuits Lawsuits by whom? Not by strangers, but by members of the Catholic Church, by choir members, altar boys, bringing lawsuits. My dear friends, listen, we are living in a sad day. And do you mean to say your life is for this purpose of denying the truth of God? You know, I simply can't understand people who get so agitated over a storm in a teacup. Some brother said like this. Some brother did like this. Someone said like this. What? It's irrelevant. When millions are being lost, what are you doing? Playing a game? I have no time for such rubbish. Absolutely no time. I am too busy fighting for the Lord, fighting for the truth, to go on nitpicking, nitpicking. I'm too busy to do that. I refuse to be diverted. But that's all, that's all people are. They're just too busy with trifling things when millions of souls are being lost. Now, I refuse to be, I, re, I refuse to digress. 
I must be about my father's business. I have in any case very short time. And I need to be completely involved and absorbed just in my father's business. You know, but religion has become a commercial game today. I'm shocked. You know, I got some information. I was preaching in a place where, you know, if I announce a meeting at 6 in the morning or 5.30 in the morning, the whole place, not only the big hall, but the whole area will be crowded out. including the surrounding area. Hunger for God's word. So sometimes I get off the train at about 5 in the morning or 4.30 in the morning and at 5.30 I preach there to this expectant crowd and uh, I suddenly realized that the boys and the girls were doing their final exams. Schools and colleges were having their exams. So I said, now, who are the students here? Stand. Please stand. I want to pray for you. And I was amazed to find right in the midst of the exams, so many students were present. And so I prayed for them that the Lord will bless them. And I had information thanking me, saying, so some of those children that were present did very well and came out in top flying colors and the exams. And uh, you know, friends, while, while of course all my services have always been free, I have never said I charge so much for a sermon or any such Thing. How can I? I have no authority to do that. But, you know, that's normally done these days. And speaking engagements are supposed to be very expensive. And some people will actually write me off saying, this fellow can't be a preacher of any worth because he does not charge for his preaching. But the Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. You know what somebody told me recently? That at the time of exams, students were being drawn and told, if you become members with this fee, which is monthly fee, we will pray for you. Can you imagine such a thing? Raising money through the promise of prayer. How is that possible? We pray because the, we love. That's the motive behind prayer. We preach the word of God because that's the only lifeline that can be thrown to any struggler in the storm. 
No other life like. That's why we preach the good news. Repent and believe the gospel. So we see the history, the whole history of families being changed. Marvelously changed. And uh, so when I look at any audience before me, I know their background, I know possibly their grandparents, I know their parents, I know how faith came into their family and how their family was transformed by the Lord and the subsequent history. And I'm filled with wonder and praise because I know the chronic diseases that were in the family that just disappeared, the Lord Jesus healing them. And some of those generational sins that were in those families. Generational sins. But strong root. And how the Savior redeemed them. And wiped away the past. Cleaned the past. How miraculous. I say this is simply so wonderful. And you know, folks, where does it all begin? Repent and believe the gospel. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ taught. And that is what he taught his disciples to preach wherever they went the kingdom of God is at hand repent now you know friends there is a thing called repenting for our the sins of our father now looking back, when I ask some people, was there ever a missionary in your family? Was there anybody who sacrificed anything for Jesus? And very often the reply is, no, we didn't know Jesus. We didn't know anything about the truth. That's understandable when a person comes from Islam or from Buddhism or Hinduism. You saw the faces of those people. Some of them were animists. Some of them were worshippers of spirits. That's all they knew. And the Lord Jesus touched them. You know, friends, it also requires a certain measure of consistency. You can't preach something here and go out there and do something else. That's the surest way to bring the gospel into disrepute. And that's what has been happening. There are folks who know me from the time I was a boy, when I was converted and started preaching the word of God. And they know how through the years, if there has been a change in my life, it is this. 
the change is i am a humbler person today from the time when i was a fiery preacher youthful preacher and preached first in england years ago a far humbler person i can't help but be humble i have seen how little i have done i can see it how little i have done for jesus that makes me very humble you know my dear people repent and believe the gospel turning around you know folks when the pulpit sets a bad example there is no hope for the people so i say most of the blame lies here in the preacher nearly all the blame if there is one consistent godly obedient christian or take a christian family where a husband and a wife work together you know today why a wife takes off at in one angle and the husband takes off at another angle and uh, there is discord and what are the children to do whom are they to follow that is why my father always said parents husbands and wives should always pray together every day the job factor is another thing today the job factor brings also considerable disarray now my friends a young man told me with some sorrow and bitterness in his heart he said my mother-in-law tells my wife you had better lose your husband rather than lose your job just think of that just think of that money comes first you know there's a lot of mutual sacrifice in marriage and yet it we can't really call it sacrifice there are certain things which your taste and your wife's particular taste may not always jibe or mesh but are you going to fight over the color of your curtains or what are you fight trying to pick a fight about i don't know but think of that money has become such a big thing today what is required repent humble yourself let us pray please lord please lord as i said earlier you know i am incompetent to preach in a situation like this 
I need much more dedication, much more anguish of soul. Oh, gracious Father, visit these dear people, I beseech you, and help them. We beg you. In Jesus' almighty name, amen.